with this documentary filmmaking, like, why, what do you like it? Like, what, why does documentary filmmaking really stand out to you? Well, I got to make a documentary when I was in school. So I went to uh, New Mexico while I was in school my last semester with my film partner. So I had a buddy that I did pretty much everything with. And then my, uh, the professor I told you about earlier, her husband went with us as well. And he's oh, a professor cool. at, a, at a very prestigious school in Dallas. And he's a film professor also. And we went and we stayed a month with a Native American tribe. It's the oldest Native American tribe in the Southwest. They're called the Peekeries. Wow. We stayed there with them. And we filmed them, asked them questions, saw the way they lived. But primarily what I wanted to do was I always wanted to make, because Native, Native Americans in general have always fascinated me, like their life, what they've thought about America because of obviously what happened hundreds of years ago and the way that they were treated, kicked off their lands. Um, so how they felt about living here, what the government assistance was like, if they actually got it, um, how they made their life living off the land and doing all these things that they did then that they still do today. So I always wanted to make a video about a Native American tribe. So I found them and they were totally willing to do it. Uh, so I wanted to do a past, present, future type uh, documentary. So we made a 12 minute, I believe, documentary with them. And it just covered where they came from, where they are today and where they hope to be. And I got to learn so many awesome things about these people. And that's what made me fall in love with documentary filmmaking. I always enjoyed doing it because you're getting to tell someone's story. Yeah. Instead of, you know, like one of my favorite movies is uh, The Dark Knight Rises. You know, it's Batman. It's totally fictional, but it's still awesome. You know, mm -hmm. but this is, is just fact. And you're getting to, to bring someone's story to other people. And if you watch it and you go, man, I didn't have an appreciation for what Native Americans have been through, what they still go through today, how they handle their business, you know, then that's awesome. That's something that I enjoy. So, you know, I've always just liked being able to make someone's story come to life. I always kind of liked fact over fiction as far as my film. Right. Right. But I still love fiction when it comes to watching it. You were talking about this tribe. Where did you post this video that we could watch? So I posted it on YouTube and it's called Peak Reese in America. Um, so, and, and it, and it's, it's a really cool story. Like I said, I think it's 11 and a half, 12 minutes long, but it just gives you a really in-depth look at the oldest Native American tribe in the Southwest. So, I mean, they've been around for over a thousand years, significantly longer than that, actually. Um, but the, the most relative part of the story that I could tell you without giving anything away is, and what we were really trying to show is that they had, they, they were also the largest. They had 7,000 members or over 7,000 members when they wow. started. And now they have barely over 300. So what? that was the story that we were trying to show is what they've been through, how they've gotten to this point and how they can continue down the line. And the main problem is, is the education factor. The right. kids, don't want to hear about the history of, of their parents. Yeah. So, you know, technology and different things like that make them want to go out into the world, go to college and not come back. So we were just really trying to show the kids there as well. You can go out and learn, you can go to school, you can do all these things, but you need to remember who you are and where you came from. You need to come give back to your community, bring that education back so that they can continue on because without the kids, you know, they're, they're going to die right, out. Right, exactly. It was very, very, it was very interesting. So you said 12 minutes? 12 minutes. So it was probably over like 80 hours of shooting. That's what I'm saying. Three months, or for a month of shooting and going out there and setting a try for a 12-minute doc. Yeah, it's crazy. That is so insane. Yeah. I mean, and when you think about it, some movies are three, four months, and they put it down to two and a half hours. So it's, yeah. it, 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 it was a lot of setting a camera up, shooting, asking questions, doing things that we didn't use. Um, a lot of B-roll, um, which for like the audience is where you're basically just getting extra shots mm -hmm. outside of things that you can use. So, I mean, we probably had 30, 40 hours of B-roll shots doing mountains, going up the mountains, um, horses running by, buffalo, the lake, drone uh, shots, all these things that we did that, that we didn't use. So. Yeah. That's so what did you guys film on when you were out there? 
we used cameras from school. So I think we used a Panasonic like PS 200 or something like that. It's a 4k, oh, cool. 4k camera. Um, and then we used drones and, yeah. um, we did handheld, we did tripod setups, but we did, I mean, we did all sorts of stuff. And then I also used my, my 4k, um, camera for some other stuff that we mixed in with it. So as long as everything was shot in 4k, you were okay. Yeah, of course. That's insane though, man. A whole month. Like you just don't even realize the amount of work that goes out there. <laughs> it was the most work I've ever done in my life for sure. For sure. So and, and all for free too. That's the hard part. Yeah, that's you know? mm -hmm. so, and then we didn't get voiceover whenever we left. So we were at school putting the documentary together. And then after you go out there and you shoot the 70, 80 hours of shooting, you're going to go back and do another 50, 60 hours of editing. Cause you're taking all, right. all of that shooting and you have to watch all 80 hours and you have to break it down, break it down, break it down. Keep seeing what you can live without because you have to get it under like 15 minutes. Otherwise it's not going to be interesting. Exactly. So quick and to the point. So you go back and you watch it over and over and over and over again. And then all of a sudden we realized we weren't going to be able to get through the story without voiceover. So we had to drive another 10 hours back out there through the mountains in the winter when it was like icy in the mountains so we had to drive back out there just to get a Native American voice to do voiceover because I didn't want to do it. I felt like it would take away from the mm -hmm. authenticity of the video if it was me doing it. So I wanted to get one of the tribe members to do it. So we had to go out there and drive 10 hours back just to go get the voiceover so we could have someone run through the story to make it all, all flow, I guess, you know? Right. Yeah. Gosh, man. It just blows my mind because, like, you think – you think of YouTube as a platform and you have someone uploading a 12 minute video of them eating mukbang or something like that, or yeah. doing mukbang yeah. eating and you're like, Oh, this got like 20 million views. And then there's this project that took a month to shoot months to edit and put together and how many color corrections and re edits and re scripting and re audio fix and whatever it may be. And you finally put it out and you're like, it's got X amount of views. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's, it's uh it's stressful because i did that so many times when i was doing like the dancing thing and work on a dancing film script it write it rent an area rent a videographer do all those kinds of things shoot the whole entire thing post like a three minute video and it was like 50 views and it cost a thousand plus dollars yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy but it's the experience it's the experience because once people learn your name those views will go up so much. It's just all about right. recognition and people knowing who you are. But what you learn when you spend that thousand dollars, that's, I mean, that's what it's all about. Like I, I learned more in that month than I learned in my entire life. Yeah. And that's the most important thing because now the next project, you know, so much more. Yeah. And next project, you just, you learn, you carry so much knowledge throughout it and you're finally hitting better audiences. You're hitting better numbers, you're hitting better, just an overall art, you know? Yeah. And once I get my, my name on a credits of a movie as a production assistant and scrolling through and people see it, then they start searching your name on Google and then they start seeing these old yeah. videos that you made. And then it just, so the recognition, basically what I'm saying is you might not get it right now and the satisfaction might not be there right now, but at some point once your name gets out there and people go back and look at it and the views go up, they'll be like, mm. man, this guy made this, you know, 10 years ago and this video is still so cool or so. Right. Yeah. I'm hoping I I'm hoping I can do that vice versa. I tell all my guests, including yourself, that I hope one day that one of these many guests that I interview is gonna blow up and be like, yo, I interviewed that guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sure. like I'm sure it will happen, man. I'm sure it will happen. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting.